Let's get a solid definition of what we are going to be talking about, because declarative and imperative code is something that is generally vaguely defined, context dependent, and not everyone agrees on what it even means. In this video, we are going to take the definition of declarative code being where the definition of a thing and how it can change over time is contained entirely within the declaration of that thing. And so it never needs to be reassigned. And imperative code simply being where we define a thing, but reassign it at some other point in the code. This means that for declarative code, the definition of a thing and how its value can change over time is contained entirely within the declaration of that thing. Whereas with imperative code, the definition of a thing and how its value can change over time is spread out throughout the code base. This definition of declarative code is what I find useful when considering declarative and imperative code in the context of building front-end applications. These concepts may still apply in other areas, but front-end application development, specifically with Angular, is what I am primarily talking about. With that definition out of the way, I want to spend the rest of the video showing why I think a declarative approach is the obvious choice over imperative in any situation where we have the freedom to do it. I've created a lot of videos looking at declarative and imperative code, but when showing code examples, I feel like the benefit can get lost in the details and emphasis can be lost on more unimportant details like syntax or lines of code differences. A declarative version of something might be significantly shorter than its imperative counterpart, it might be the same or significantly longer, but this has little to do with the fundamental benefit. So what we are going to do is look at an entirely visual explanation of the benefit of declarative code. Let's look at two hypothetical applications side by side. First, we will initialize a value that could represent the current temperature. We'll make this non-trivial and say that this value is coming from some asynchronous source like a remote database. It doesn't really matter where from exactly, just that the value is not immediately available. In both cases, we create a declaration for the temperature. With the declarative approach, the code for defining how that value is retrieved is contained within the declaration itself, with a clear link between the source and the declaration when we inspect the declaration. For the imperative example, we have some separate process that handles getting the value and setting it. With the imperative code, there is no direct link between the initial declaration and where its value is eventually being set. To find this connection, you would need to find the process that handles fetching that value and seeing that it references the initial declaration. Only when you find and look at this process does the connection between the declaration and its source become visible. In my opinion at least, this is already an extremely compelling case for the declarative approach. With a declarative approach, if you want to know what a particular thing is or how it behaves, you only need to look at its declaration. With the imperative approach, you need to look for any logic throughout the code base that references the declaration. If you find one imperative connection, it doesn't mean there aren't also more connections hidden out there in the code base somewhere. And then you have this extra cognitive load of trying to figure out how all these connections fit together. But let's take this further. Let's say that this value is not just set initially, but its value can also be updated by some other process. Maybe this happens automatically, maybe it's triggered manually by some user action, it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this explanation. With the declarative approach, this new source of change is in some way connected to the initial declaration. And that connection is clear when looking at the declaration. Conceptually, it might look like this, but the specifics here don't particularly matter. The key thing is that there is a clear connection between the declaration and the things it depends on. We might have multiple things in a chain that are dependent on each other, but we can clearly follow that chain. With the imperative approach, we have another process floating somewhere in the code base that has no clear connection to the declaration, except for that we can see this process references that declaration if we find it. Now let's say we want to derive some other value from our temperature value. For example, an is hot boolean that is derived from the current temperature. With the declarative approach, we just use the temperature as the source for this derived value. There is a clear connection between these two values, and the declaration of is hot contains all of the information about how the temperature value is used to determine the is hot boolean. Perhaps more importantly, if the temperature value changes, then is hot will automatically update for the new temperature value with no manual handling required. 
With the imperative approach, there is no clear connection between the two values. And we have another process floating in the code base with no clear connection to is hot until we find that process. And what is worse here is that if the temperature value changes, then we need to make sure we have some other process that handles taking that new temperature value and setting the derived value appropriately. The example we have looked at is a completely trivial everyday scenario for a front-end application. And even at this scale and complexity, I think the benefit of declarative code is obvious. But let's scale this visualization up to something that might resemble an even marginally complex application. Now imagine coming into this code base and attempting to understand how it works. With the declarative approach, I can pick any declaration and easily trace through how it behaves in the application. With the imperative approach, I'm given almost nothing. If I want to understand a particular thing, I have to go searching and try to piece together how the interplay of maybe five different processes updating this one value works, and perhaps how some new bit of code I want to add can be integrated into this. With a declarative approach, how things are updated is more rigorously defined within the declaration itself, and it is much easier to see how our new requirement needs to be integrated into this process. I want to be clear that I'm not advocating for 100% declarative code. Generally, some level of imperative code is required when creating front-end apps. What I'm advocating for is as much declarative code as is practical, which is usually a lot, and maybe even slightly more than that. The most important consideration is that while there might be some imperative stuff happening in the application, the general flow of data in the application should be declarative and reactive with no surprising breaks in that reactivity. Imperative code should ideally be hidden behind declarative wrappers to enable this overall flow, or should be limited to small tasks like triggering a source in response to a user action. If you found this video helpful, please consider a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you back here again.